this is exaggerated, okay? So this is now our what? Deformation pattern. Due to Buckley. So you realize that it is not a straight line. The deformation is not like before. I, I don't really like the way I drew this. It, it should be symmetrical parabolic. Yeah, okay. So it's not along the, it's not along the centroid anymore, as you can see, okay? So what we can do now is we can create, if we not create, but I'm going to label a point down here. This point, I'm going to call it Q, okay? And Q has a certain distance. Okay, so it has a Y, which is our deflection. Okay. And point Q occur along a specific distance. And this distance is our x. Okay. And then I want to draw your attention to two points. Okay. So the two points I want to draw your attention to is the point at the top and then the point at the bottom down here. Okay. So the red dot at the top, we know that at x, is equal to zero, y is also equal to zero. So what we have created down here is what we know as boundary condition number one. Okay, when x is equal to zero, y is equal to zero. And at the bottom dot down here, when x is approximately equal to L naught, Approximately equal to L naught because the structure has been compressed, it will deflect slightly. Okay, so it's slightly equal to L naught. And Y is also equal to zero. So this is our boundary condition number two. Okay. So what we are going to do now okay, is this curve over here. We are going to, in the next like half an hour, I think, we are going to mathematically uh, describe how the structure is deflecting. Okay, so we want to re we want to relate how along a certain distance x we are seeing the deflection in the y. Okay, now before we do that, we are going to sketch the free body diagram, and we're going to sketch the free body diagram. between x is equal to zero to point Q. Okay, we're gonna sketch the free body diagram. Okay, so we will have our centroid. Okay, and this is one of our point. At this point, x is equal to zero. And then we know 
the structure has a load P as applied. And at a certain distance away, right? Now we have point Q. Okay. So by applying to Newton's third law, applying Newton's third law. which is every action has an equal and opposite reaction. We know that point P or point Q has a reaction force which is our P prime, okay? So this is what we are doing now, it's called static analysis. Okay, we're doing that. So if P, the, the, the P, when X is equal to zero is P with a P prime. But if we were to look at point Q, if we are look at point Q, point Q has deviated from a certain distance away from the centroid, and this distance is Y. Okay, so it has deviated from a certain distance from the centroid now. Okay. And a certain distance Y. Okay. So when there's a case, we know that moment, is equal to force multiplied by perpendicular distance. So we know that PY or P at the top, okay, so or P at X is equal to zero, is going to generate a moment in this direction. Okay. So this is the applied moment. Deal. Okay, the applied moment. due to y and p, right? Force time perpendicular distance. And then if we were to apply Newton's third law again, right? If we were to apply Newton's third law, we need to have a counter moment and this counter moment is moment at point Q, okay? So the counter moment is going in the clockwise direction. In general, usually clockwise is always what? Negative, uh, it's always negative. So moment at point P Oh, sorry, moment at point Q is equal to minus P multiplied by Y. Y minus because it's acting in a clockwise direction. Okay. Now, the next thing that we have to go on, going to consider now, okay, so we know there's a applied moment. So you can, you, 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 you have appreciation now that uh, buckling analysis is not the same as under axle loading. The difference is we have a bending moment. Okay, we have a moment at point Q, okay? So next, we are going to apply, okay, we would like to apply the elastic curve equation to relate Uh, bending moment to deflection. Okay, we're going to 
apply the elastic curve equation. So the elastic curve equation states that EI, Young's modulus and second moment of area is equal to d squared y over dx squared. Okay. And this is equal to m. Okay. So this equation over here is known as the elastic curve equation. I'm not going to do the deviation for it, but we are just going to apply it. Okay. So now, how does this work? Okay. So let's look at the application or, or yeah, how does this work now? Okay. Or, or what are we trying to determine down here? Okay. So we are going to now look at an uh, application. Okay. Of the elastic curve theory. Okay. Or how or how are we going to apply this okay now before i go on what are we trying to achieve okay what are we trying to achieve we are trying to determine what is this y distance okay once this y as long as there's this y distance right there's a, a slight magnitude of this y distance buckling will occur okay is if y is equal to zero, no buckling. If y is greater than zero, then there's a high possibility or there is a tendency for buckling to occur. Okay, so at the end of the day, we like to determine the deflection, but it's different under axial loading. If we were to go on to here, right, the deflection is along the y, it's along the center, the delta y. Is along the centroid. Okay, the delta y is along the centroid. But for buckling, the, the deflection or the y is not along the centroid anymore. So that's where we have to apply different theory now, which is known as the elastic curve theory to determine the deflection. Okay, so we are going to now apply EI, which is which is d y the second order or d squared y d x squared, and this is equal to m. Okay, so we are going to consider a structure. Okay, now this structure is different. Okay, I want to show you how moment is applied to this structure. Why moment is critical? At the end of the day, when we consider buckling, is also a what? A moment function. You can see that, right? You can realize that it is also a moment function. Okay, it's eight o'clock now. We take a five minutes break. I'll see all of you at eight o five.